So a French drain, what is it and why do you need one? Let's talk about it a little bit. Before we start talking about the uh, French drain, uh, Aaron and I got some footage of us removing the forms all around the footers and the piers. Uh, we started out just unscrewing all of the stakes that were in the ground, uh, but then it got a little tiring and old, and we just started using a uh, sledgehammer and breaking all of the uh, wooden stakes in the ground. As you can see, some of the uh, stakes are steel, which you have to use a pipe wrench to basically unscrew out of the ground. It's the only way to get them out. Um, but it was an extremely hot day. We kept moving the tent around to keep us uh, shaded, but we put in a lot of work and uh, eventually got them done. Also in a little bit here, you'll see a uh, slinger truck come in. And we had 18 tons of 57 uh, round stone delivered, which is going to be thrown into the basement here. And that's going to be our uh, stone for underneath of our slab so that we can build back up uh, the dirt that was removed. I also had another 20 tons of 57 round delivered. And that stone is going to be for our French drain and on the perimeter walls on the outside. So that way, uh, water, when it rains, if it gets down through the grating, it'll be very easy to flow all the way down through that round stone, make it into our French drain, which will then easily take it through uh, our footer. Bring it into our sump pump and we'll be all set. I didn't mean to miss out on that video, but that was a slinger truck that was just here. Uh, this stone here I had delivered from a guy that I know. It's 57 round washed gravel. As you can see, it looks... It's colored versus what just uh, limestone is. This is uh, kind of twos and 304 mixed in, which right now it's basically about 57. All the uh, other powdery stuff that's in 304 has already worked its way down and what's locked our driveway in. But this stone here and the stone that I just had delivered is what we're going to use for our French drain system. Basically, the 57 washed round is going to go all around in here. You can see that where it's been raining and all of this clay has settled, this silt and clay, uh, very fine particles within the water and everything. So you want to keep that out of the French drain. And if you look, let me get down here actually. If you look, you got very nasty, silty water right here. But where I've already started laying 57, you can see that this water actually goes down a few inches in some spots. Oh, sorry, little guy. Come on, get out of there. Uh, this water already goes down a few inches in some spots. You can see that it's actually clear. So this 57 round is excellent for drainage, but it'll let all the water go from up here on topsoil go on down get into the french drain and we're going to take it all the way to that back corner right there so that slinger truck was able to throw that a good 40 50 feet or so we were able to make it over the entire uh garage this huge hole here this is about 30 feet that's probably another 10 20 feet he really just arched it up first he just started spraying it back and forth and then i told him just dump it in a pile and we'll go ahead and push it all in here uh, the goal is to have this 57 round uh, about three inches all in here then we're going to do about an inch of sand we're going to pack all that down then we're going to put a six mil vapor barrier then we're going to put our two inch hard rigid foam uh, tape those seams together and then that's where our pex tubing is going to get uh, attached to for our radiant floor heat now the stone and sand should come up to the top of the footers and then these pillars here are going to be the top of the concrete floor so these are roughly six inches higher than the sides of the footers so again we'll have all the stone sand pack it down the vapor barrier and then the two inches of foam will sit on top of the footer that way you have this nice envelope right here that all of this foam goes into this foam and no concrete under here is basically exposed except for the three pillars the foam is just gonna uh, be about two inches down here and then we'll have four inches of concrete meet up to here and then this will be completely level for the entire basement floor mm -hmm. 
Let's see how much of 18 tons I can move before my back gives out. I'll probably wrap this up here. As you can see, we got all of this corner done. We've got all of that corner done. We still need to filter in through here, push through here, obviously over there. Hopefully we have enough stone. I needed 18 yards, but they sent 18 tons. So I'm not sure if I'll have enough, but sand is still gonna go in here again before the vapor barrier, before the rigid foam, so. Even if we don't have enough stone, we'll see how much sand costs. Uh, it's starting to rain again. Uh, I've got the GoPro side off, so that can't get wet. Uh, as you can see, I kind of made a little sump pump over here, which it is now sucking air, so we'll shut that down. So again, kind of a makeshift septic over here. That way debris can't get in here, but I believe this is the lowest spot. In fact, you can just see how quickly that's filling back up. The pump's just more powerful than what it can, uh, the water can flow through all of this rock. So in a second, that'll be completely full again. And I mean, it's rising like an inch every probably 30 seconds or more. The pump, like I said, is just too powerful. Uh, but all this water down through here will come through there. And way more water through here will come down through here, fill up this little septic hole. And then throughout the night, if it doesn't keep storming, I'll keep plugging that back in. Or actually, I'll probably plug it in at the camper. Just let that shoot out to the yard, get this thing drained. And we can go ahead and flatten all this out start working on our French drain and get to the true septic hole which is back there in the back and then we should be ready to go to start stacking some blocks and get this house on the way so basically a French drain or drainage tile is a way to get outside water away from your foundation it's not just in case you've got water trying to get through your walls and get into the basement it's also what's called hydrostatic pressure. If you backfill all of this with stone or some cheaper builders would just use your native soil, which is not good and not recommended because if you do put a drain down in there, that soil is gonna compact, water's not gonna get through it very quickly and it's not gonna get down in there and take it away. So if you use stone, it's gonna travel a lot quicker through, get to your tile, get into your sump pump, your sump pump will kick it back out and away from your foundation. So if hydrostatic pressure is building up, it's pushing on your walls. Now, if you can imagine a boat that is built more in kind of a, a U shape with internal bracing, that boat is displacing water and the boat is really not trying to push in and collapse the hull. The problem is basements are straight up and down. There is no internal bracing. Therefore, if you build up a bunch of water on the outside, not only are you having either dirt or your stone pushing against that wall, but now you just filled up every single crack and crevice with water, which is going to increase the hydrostatic pressure and really push in on that basement wall. Now, there are some basements obviously made of just uh, poured, reinforced with rebar, or simply um, cinder block. You can make cinder block strong. You can pour concrete down in all of the holes. You can put rebar in all of the holes also. You can either even cut a groove every few rows up of cinder block, lay a piece of rebar, and also go horizontally. So you can make a block wall extremely strong, but if you still have hydrostatic pressure pushing against that wall, it's going to bow in and eventually fail, which is why you see a lot of older house who don't have proper French drain systems. 
they end up with a uh, uh, mosquitoes. They end up with having to put those steel I beams, uh, drilling a hole down in their basement floor, pushing that up against the wall, bolting it up against uh, the floor joists, and then keeping that pressure kind of pushing back against it. Not only is it unsightly, but it also sucks that that cost a ton of money. And if your basement was already finished, well, now you got to rip down all your, your drywall and everything else and go ahead and do that reinforcement. So if you have a proper system from the get-go, then you don't have to worry about your basement walls failing. Now, what I chose to go with is there's a few different options. You've got the corrugated, flexible stuff. Uh, some come black, some come yellow. It just has to do with how many holes there are around the corrugation. Uh, some even have a filter sock around it. I don't believe in any of those because the corrugated stuff is never going to be as strong as PVC pipe, which is what I went with. Uh, the super big problem you never want to go with is the corrugated pipe with a filter sock already around that. If you think about it, that sock, let's say it's on a six inch or let's say it's on a piece of four inch corrugated pipe. That sock only sticks out an inch or two away from the pipe. If you've got a bunch of silt and clay and dirt go down and eventually clog that sock, you're done. Your, your drain is no longer going to work. Because if you take a piece of that fabric, let's say only an inch wide, and on a four inch piece of pipe, let's say it sticks out two inches on each side, uh, you got roughly, let's say eight inches all the way around there. That's only one inch by eight inches around that's giving you protection against keeping silt out of that pipe. Once you clog that filter sock, you're done. Now, what we plan on doing is taking a non-woven four pound geotech fabric and laying it from here all the way over, coming up all the way and then wrapping it around. Actually, it'll be this way. It'll come up and over this way. So now you take that same inch of material, but two, three feet on the bottom, three, four feet up, three, four feet wrapped back around over. You just increased your square area a hundred fold. Therefore, any silt or anything that's trying to clog my filter fabric or my geotech fabric is going to take a hundred times longer to clog and uh, to have that stop working. So, again, we went with the PVC pipe because it is stronger. It'll last forever. And as you can see here, we've basically got three holes. You've got one directly in the center, and then you've got these two here, kind of on a 45. Now, holes always go down. I've seen a lot of people put them up. The problem is, is water then has to fill up, pushing against and possibly getting in uh, your footer and where your wall will come down. Water's gonna wanna try and get underneath there because it wasn't one all monolithic pour. So if you put your uh, holes up, all of that water builds up, builds up, builds up. And depending on where these holes are, whether it be the side ones or whether it be the top one, if it's at the top of your footer right here, that water can get up there, try to push through your footer and try to push underneath of your uh, basement walls. So you definitely don't want to put holes up. So by putting the holes down, that those holes are now at the complete bottom and any water that leaches up through that uh, middle hole or gets halfway up here on these 45 will leach into here and be taken out and go towards your sump pump. Depending what you want to use, like I said, there are different corrugated pipes out there. Um, I know there's a manufacturer out there that's yellow. It's actually pretty strong and the holes are a lot better than the cheaper stuff, uh, the black stuff that you can get at the big box stores. I don't know if I would use that. I've seen it used a lot for irrigation and drainages around the houses. But when you're putting that corrugated stuff way down in a hole, packing in. Now, granted, we're only going down 
five feet at the most of stone and dirt that's going to be pushing on that and then whatever grading that we need so let's say there's seven feet total is pushing down on that pipe that may not be that bad uh, another house though that digs a basement eight or nine feet deep plus their backfill they may be having 10 11 feet of pressure putting down pushing down on their stuff so with a corrugated pipe that much pressure that deep down uh, I would rather go with a PVC, which is much stronger in comparison. We do plan on wrapping the entire house and garage. Uh, there was an option to dig down under here on the footer and running a French drain this way and then bringing the sump pump over here somewhere. But we decided to just go ahead and protect everything. So we're going to run that French drain from the sump pump in that corner all the way down here around the garage, basically so the entire perimeter of the entire house and foundation are protected. hope that kind of sums it up. Uh, like I said, if you try to waterproof your basement walls, no matter what you use, ICF, or if you're using... Um, kind of a spray on adhesive or a, like a tar if you're using poured foundation cinder block it doesn't matter you've got to protect the outside of that wall with waterproofing and keeping water away from it water is a natural um solvent no matter what you put on something, water is eventually going to try to eat away at there. So even if you spray on some super awesome protective coating, again, whether it's a poured wall or a cinder block wall, there's still a chance that that is going to fail because um, water is going to try and eat at it. It's uh, going to move. If you think about uh, freeze and thaw, your foundation and ground is going to move. If you've got rocks and dirt pushed up against that, if they're like digging or eating away at it, that's all a possibility that it's gonna be a fail point one day and you don't want water against there. So anything that you can do to keep water away, I'm fine with a stone scratching at something. I'm fine if you get through your protective uh, membrane or your protective spray on at some point, but if there's no water, behind that penetration point from a stone pushing in or not then you, you don't have to worry about it there's not going to be a problem um, i actually have a friend who asked me the other day hey my basement is leaking first thing i said you got to do it right and got to go from the outside a lot of people will try to spend less money and dig around the inside of the basement and put a french drain in you're kind of putting a band-aid on a bigger problem and you need to dig from the outside re-waterproof your wall put in a drain tile or a french drain that's actually going to work uh another big thing is back in this corner let me not forget uh, on the back side of the house kind of away uh, from everything we are going to put a clean out also so let's say these uh, the filter fabric ends up failing silt comes up through and starts clogging these holes when you put a clean out in they're basically just a pipe coming back through you can put a garden hose or a snake down in there getting it through your French drain and doing a clean out just in case these ever fail now most houses that I have seen they usually use a four inch uh, i've seen even some of the more expensive builders uh, a friend of actually um the build show matt reisinger on youtube he had a buddy do uh two four inches with two clean outs that gets a lot of that i think that gets a little bit more expensive doing two of them so i bit the bullet spent about six hundred dollars on 260 feet of pipe all of the fittings and we are going to have to go in that back corner, dig under it just once uh, underneath of the footer and put a piece of pipe into the uh, into the sump pump. Um, all of that, again, was only six hundred dollars. Um, my dad had an account with a company where he works for because, like I said, he does construction and he's in kind of the sewer pipe laying kind of stuff out on the street. Uh, and I was able to get this stuff at like a dollar a foot uh, plus fittings plus glue. So you may not have that option. You may want to go with something cheaper, but I'm telling you now, if it's not PVC, you don't have to go six inch, but at least go consider your options with PVC four inch with a clean out wrapping your French drain in a very large burrito of a non-woven style of fabric, keeping that silt, dirt, sand, everything away from your drainage stone that's going all the way down to that. And honestly, it'll probably outlast you 
uh, but I would imagine years down the road, someone will have to replace the fabric. It probably will get clogged, but we're probably talking I'll be long and dead by then. So I hope that video made sense of how to protect your foundation, especially if you're doing a basement. I know a lot of people in the South, uh, they don't do basements. They just have um, poured slabs. Uh, that's obviously not going to worry you at all. You don't have to watch this video and uh, have that be an issue for you. But uh, if you are building a new house, if you're talking to your builder, uh, ask questions. See what they're going to use because um, you don't want to run into this problem down the road. And if you ever watch uh, Mike Holmes for Homes on Homes uh, up in Canada, uh, he's been through this a hundred times where just builders just using builder grade, uh, trying to bypass everything that they can do, doing the bare minimum. And that's why he has a popular show because so many homes end up failing for these little things that you could just spend a little bit of money now and protect yourself uh, for the rest of the home's life. $600 is gonna go a really long way. Uh, we will be back at it tomorrow. I'm probably gonna keep moving all of that stone. As you can see, there is still a ton of stone to do. I would say I only got about one fourth of the basement done. All of that needs still spread out. Uh, then by the time I get all of that stone uh, spread out and done, I can go ahead and order the slinger truck again. And this time we'll go ahead and order sand. Uh, and then after that, we can go ahead and put down our vapor barrier, our rigid foam, and then we should be ready to start laying PEX tubing for the radiant floor heating. And at the same time, we'll probably build up the walls, pour those, and we'll be on our way. So like I said, like and subscribe. I uh, hope you guys enjoy this video, and we'll see you next time.